Let's say you have a data set of three types of objects shown as differently colored X vectors. And we have the information about their labels as well, which are indicated using the Y variables. Again, colored similarly to our X vectors. But these Y variables are each assigned a number, a positive index starting from 0 to 2. And what we want is to have a model that could help us predict the label given the X vector as the input. And one potential model that could be created is using a neural network. Our X vectors are six dimensional. That is why there are six neurons in the input layer. An interesting aspect here is that the last layer of this neural network has just one neuron. And we expect that our model, that is this neural network, will predict the class ID. That is either zero or one or two. And I would say that this is not really an ideal setup. You see, the model is an approximation to the reality. So maybe a more appropriate thing to do is to get our model predict the scores for various possible classes given an input X vector. And so we can modify our neural network like this. Here I have three neurons in the last layer. Let's even color the neurons similar to the colors we have chosen for our classes. And given this setup, when we will pass the X vector to the neural network, we will get the scores for all the class labels. So let's do that. Here are the scores. These so-called scores are also called logits in most of the neural network literature. And just by looking at the values emitted by the neurons in the last layer for this X vector, you can see that the yellow neuron is giving the highest value. And it seems to be good because the vector that we passed was a yellow vector. Let's see how we can analyze these logits first. Here I have put these values that I showed earlier in a NumPy array. And I can use argmax function to get the index in this array at which we have the highest value. We can see that the argmax is giving us the value of 0. That is the index 0 of the logit, logits vector has the highest value. But we can do better. Instead of getting the index at which we have the maximum value, we can perhaps get the list of indices that are sorted as per their values. So here the output is saying that the value of value at index 1 is the lowest, the value at index 2 is the second lowest, and value at index 0 is the highest. We can also always get the list in the descending order as well by doing this kind of a trick with NumPy arrays. Now, so far we have used argmax or argsort to give meaning to the predictions and more importantly, we got the class labels by using this method. But we have not considered how to deal when we are training the neural networks. During the training phase, we are supposed to compare the predictions with the ground truth. The comparison is done by using what is called a loss function that generates a value that somewhat quantifies how far our predictions are from the ground truth. That loss value is also then used to update the parameters of your neural network during the training phase. In simple words, our first order of business is to compare the predictions and the ground truths. As such, before figuring out a way to compare, we notice that even the dimensions of our ground truth and the prediction are not same. We get a vector of size 3 as the prediction, whereas the ground truth is a scalar value. So as per the traditional data science, one trick we could do is that we could see our ground truth values as categorical variables and give them what is called a dummy encoding, something like this. Here I have a vector of size 3. Now note that the yellow category has the value 0. So that's why in this vector, I have one at the 0th index and the rest of the values are 0. And the interpretation for the other color category should be obvious by now. They follow the same rules. This kind of a transformation results in what is generally called one hot vector or one hot representation of a categorical variable. But to be honest, this is not necessarily the most optimal direction we should think in. Rather, we must see these new representations as probability distributions. So before we go any further, here are some facts. Probability is always a positive number. We know that probability is a number 
between 0 and 1 or maybe 0 and 1 as well and the entries in the probability distribution should add up to 1. And you can appreciate that these so-called one hot vectors satisfy all the three rules that I mentioned earlier. And more importantly, interpretation of the ground truth kind of makes sense as well now. For the yellow vector, we are essentially saying that the all that all the probability is giving to the zeroth index as it gets a value of one. And you can follow the same line of thinking for the other vectors now. But even though seeing our ground truth labels as the probability distribution was kind of easy, we need to do the same thing for our predictions as well. If you want to really compare apples to apples. Once we could see the prediction as the probability distribution, we would have given ourselves the possibility to use the tools from machine learning to compare them. So let's do that. Here I have the NumPy array that has the predictions of the neural network. And clearly this array does not satisfy the requirement of being a probability distribution. All the entries in the distribution are supposed to be positive and the number between 0 and 1. And you can see that it is not the case here. Now, one general theme in machine learning is that if your data does not satisfy your requirements, you transform them and you solve your problem in some other space, the space that you get after transformation. And for us to make that happen, we transform our array by passing it to an exponential function. Exponential function has this magic power to transform a negative number into a positive number. And you can see that here. But Note that this is not a probability distribution because the entries should be greater than or equal to 0 or less than or equal to 1. Here we see that the first entry is 6.6. .6. So even though the numbers are all positive, it is still not a probability distribution. And the remedy is that we take this vector, the so-called distribution, and we normalize it. And by doing that, we get what is called the probability distribution. It satisfies our definition of probability distribution. We can also say that our neural network is predicting that it believes that there is a 94% chance that x vector belongs to the class labeled 0 and there is 0.1% chance that uh, it belongs to uh, class label 1 and so on. This function that uses exponential function to convert logits into positive numbers and then normalize them is called softmax function. Essentially, the two operation, exponentiation and then the normalization. But more importantly, since now we have both the ground truth labels and the predictions as probability distributions, we can compare them and compute loss. Here is one loss function called categorical cross entropy that can be used. Uh, this is a screenshot from Keras documentation. Note that it also talks about the one hot representation for the ground truth labels. As I mentioned earlier, in my humble opinion, it is not an ideal way to think in this direction of one hot vector, but you must know about it as this is a widely used term in this context. Actually, if I were you at this point, I would be kind of uncomfortable with this whole setup we have put in place with the exponential function. Yes, this softmax function could give us a vector that seems to satisfy the definition of probability distribution, but don't you think that you should be skeptical of whether these entries really represent probabilities. And even more importantly, is there any artifact or side effect of this transformation of our logics to the so-called probabilities using the exponential transformation? And let me kill the surprise for you by informing you that there is indeed a consequence that you should be aware of. To illustrate that, I'll be using a simpler example first. Here I have set of values for variable x between minus 4 and 8 and I passed them to the exponential function and got the result stored in variable y. The plot would look like this. What you need to notice here is that after some point, let's say, let's pick a value of 2, the small change after that is causing a very large change in the output values. Here I'm showing the value of 0.2 is that it is 7, but for 0.4, it is 54. And this should worry you. I am worried. I hope you are worried too. You would agree with me that in the input space, the change from 2 to 4 is not as much as that it is in the output space. And I remind you again that we should use exponential function as a transformation to artificially make our logits vector look like a probability distribution. So this transformation does have some artifacts that you should be aware of. 
That said, we can conclude that exponential function is not necessarily good at preserving the relativeness in the outputs that it generates. A further conclusion is that the neural networks that use softmax tend to be overconfident with the predictions. They tend to assign higher probabilities to the scores that may not be much bigger than other scores because of the exponential operation. This behavior of softmax was observed and mentioned in a paper by Jeffrey Hinton in the paper titled Distilling the Knowledge in the Neural Network. I have a tutorial on this paper. As a matter of fact, it is the first video I made on this channel. Quality is not that great, but it is the most viewed video on my channel. So check it out if you're interested. The paper also suggested how we can reduce the impact of exponential function transformation and called it temperature scaling. And we will do that now as well. Here I have written the softmax function. Nothing should surprise you here. Same two operations, exponentiation and then normalization. But maybe it should surprise you as I do have an extra parameter called t. However, the default value is 1. So if I call our logit vector like this, you should see no change from the outputs we had observed earlier. But what if, if I change the value of t to 1.5? If you look at the line 2 of the softmax function, we are reducing the value of logits before passing them to the exponential function. And the consequence is that in the output, we now see that the index 0 has a value of 0 0.85 instead of 0 0.94. And the entries at the other indices have increased. And the consequence is that the distance between the entries have reduced now. Let's try other value, this time the value of 2 and now the first entry reduces further and the other two see an increase. This is crazy. First we took some numbers in a vector and made them look like probabilities and now by doing this trick of reducing the logits, we are adjusting the values so that the relativeness is somewhat better. I say somewhat better because we do not really know what is better. This T is known as temperature. As by using it, you are spreading out the mass from one entry to other entries. This is what heating does to solids. I seriously dislike these kind of analogies that people with background in physics bring to computer science. It actually confuses more than, than helps. But at least you know now why it is called temperature. The term is more fancy than what it is doing really. Also, in case you have not figured it out, this is a hyperparameter now. You need to search this for your model. And finally, we can represent it mathematically like this. This is a, as a softmax operation for every entry in the logit vector. Here I have put t to indicate temperature. If the t, the value of t is equal to 1, you have a regular softmax. Otherwise, it is the one with some temperature. Now, please do not go and write your own softmax function in Keras or PyTorch or TensorFlow. Rather, think in the direction of adding an extra layer before the softmax layer or, or after the logits layer that, this, that does this temperature scaling of the logits. You will see some implementations of it as custom Keras layers on GitHub. And this is all I have in this tutorial. I hope you find it useful and helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Good luck. Bye-bye.